Hi, it's Alna here and welcome back to my vlog where I talk about how you can raise your issue in the legislative and policy making process. So this is part five in a series of brief videos on the topic of land expropriation without compensation. Parts one to four is available on my YouTube channel. So this week the National Assembly adopted the report of the Constitutional Review Committee on whether um, to amend Section 25 of the Constitution uh, in the public interest. So just as background, earlier this year the NA and the National Council of Provinces resolved to mandate the Constitutional Review Committee to go out into the public and assess the views of the public in terms of amending Section 25 to allow the state to expropriate land without compensation in the public interest. So that review has been completed and on Tuesday the report of the Constitutional Review Committee was debated and ad adopted. So from the report it stated that there were several public hearings that were conducted throughout various provinces in the country. Written submissions were received and from those written submissions um, stakeholders were called to Parliament to brief the committee orally on the submissions. So in summary, the report noted that the public demonstrated an overwhelming support for the amendment of Section 25. There was also a need to address the historical inequitable land ownership that resulted from past colonial and apartheid land racial laws. So there were political parties that were against um, expropriating land without compensation and those that were for land to be expropriated with com without, without compensation. So political parties in support of land expropriation without compensation agreed that the constitution already made provision for property to be expropriated at zero compensation or below market value. Um, the contentious issue in, in the support was that whether to actually amend the constitution. So uh, the political parties that wanted the constitution to be amended agreed that it's important to clarify the position and to make explicit what already is implicit in the constitution. Political parties opposed to amending uh, section 25 and opposed to uh, expropriating land without compensation um, emphasized that although apartheid was evil and that there is a need for redress, changing the constitution would threaten the existing um, constitutional architecture. They further stated that the slow pace of land redistribution was not a constitutional problem, but rather a waste of resources through maladministration and corruption. So the other uh, issues raised in the NA debate was that the process of public uh, consultation was flawed and that not all of these submissions were duly considered. Uh, these are very serious allegations and from what I've read in the media is that they are going to even take the report to courts and challenge it there. So there have been challenges in the NA and the NCOP for lack of consultation um, and in some instances the Constitutional Court referred bills back to Parliament. One such instance uh, was the Constitutional Court case of Doctors for Life International versus the Speaker of the National Assembly. In this case the Constitutional Court provided a test for determining whether the public participation was validly conducted. The test is um, as follows, there must be consideration of the nature of the legislation concerned the importance of the legislation, the intensity of the impact the legislation will, will have on the public. So the question for me is, what is the nature of the measure before the committee? It was merely a mandate to the committee to assess the views of the public towards amending section 25 to allow for expropriation of land without compensation. I think in the case of a bull, it would require that all the elements and more um, outlined in the test uh, be complied with. However, since this was just an assessment that the committee needed to do in terms of the public's view, um, I don't think the test, all the elements of the test need to be complied with and I don't even think that the test is relevant because there's no legislative measure before the committee. Um, 
I was asked by a Facebook subscriber as to what happens next now that the go ahead uh, the go ahead has been given to amend section 25. Firstly, there needs to be a bill that will amend section 25 uh, that would need to be introduced into Parliament. Um, so that would be a constitutional amendment. And then secondly, there would be bills or a bill that would need to give effect to that constitutional amendment. And this would be called a law of general application. Um, it will be separate bills and they will be in separate commit in different committees and follow different procedures. As the bill amending section 25 is an amendment to the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, it would require a two-thirds majority vote in the NA. So once the bill has been adopted in Parliament, um, it will be sent to the President to be signed into law. It is also possible that the bill or bills uh, would be challenged in the Constitutional Court. In such an event, um, the Concord would test the bills against the constitutional principles. One other thing that needs to also be taken into account is that next year we have general elections, um, which will mean a shorter parliamentary term as the fifth parliament will come to an end. And, and this is going to impact which bills are going to be introduced in parliament next year. So these are my, so this is my take on the issues on land expropriation without compensation in the public interest and where appropriate. Please feel free to leave me a comment or if you'd like to have more information, you can visit my website at www.selmajansenconsultancy.co.za.